hey guys, what's happening? So, in my previous video, I, I told you that um, I was going to go up to Mach 3 on my 3018 build here. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, I wanted to learn more advanced features of uh, the CNC software. And Mach 3 seemed like it was a little bit more mainstream for, like, the higher-end stuff. Um, it is older software, but, I mean, you can get, you know, a lot of hardware for cheap. And it's about the same amount of money as, like, the Gribble stuff. Um, even though I actually already had the Gribble stuff, um, the controllers and stuff, but... Yeah, I wanted to try Mach 3 out just because it seemed like it was, I could, it, it seemed a little bit more professional. Um, okay, so what I currently have is I have a couple Mach 3 boards I bought on uh, Amazon. I'll put links down below and get all the stuff, stuff that I've been buying. And I got this really big board, which is 25 bucks, which actually has an extra Altera Flex chip, so I don't know what that is. I don't know, try to figure out what that does, but, um... It's a little bit different. The mechanics of it are different than Gerbil. It actually runs uh, the software, either Linux CNC or, or Mach 3 on Windows, uh, controls all the motor controls. But uh, as you know, this is actually the USB version of it. Uh, originally they came with the uh, parallel port, or like the printer port. Um, but this is actually the USB, and you can tell it actually has an ARM processor. So that's actually a... I can't tell. It's, it's, I think it's... Well, it's definitely an ARM processor, so it's definitely a... Uh, doing something to convert the USB. So that's basically a CPU, if you're not familiar with that. Um, so I wanted to make some changes here. Um, I got the driver motors here. This is going to be three axis, so um, I got the uh, the MicroStep ST DM542. And I looked at those, uh, what are they, uh, 6600s, the TB, um, the, the Toshiba drivers, and a lot of them didn't get good reviews, that issue, so I thought I'd try this. Um, yeah, I already had the 48 volt power supply, which is the spindle, and uh, I'm going to flip this over, you can see the control box, but this is my uh, spindle control, brushless spindle motor control, and uh, yeah, originally I wanted to use this board, but it was just too big to get in there, so um, a couple other things too, so I mean this is my original design, my Gerbil design, um, so I'm going to keep a similar design. Uh, which is, I've already printed out the box, I'll show you that. Uh, so all my 110 stuff stays in this one layer between here and here. So all my power supply, all my stuff will be in this one layer box. That goes like this. It's not this actual box. And then I also have like the, what's it called, the air control, coolant control here. Which then turns on and off that valve. But... A couple different things I'm going to change. So before on the Gerbil build, I actually had uh, this relay thing here. And the problem with this relay thing was that uh, any sort of inductor, right, well, uh, and it actually is rebooting my Gerbil board, is if you don't actually have a diode in there between, you know, actually sending back the positive spike back to the ground, it basically sends a huge high voltage spike back, and it was sending a high voltage spike back to my Gerbil board, which was then rebooting the Gerbil board. So every time I turned off the relay, or turned off the, the air pump, then it would reboot my uh, Gerbil board. So, um, yeah, I forgot about that, you know, I mean, like inductors, it's basically, it's a charge of voltage, you know, it's almost like a capacitor, you know, being released on, on, on your, uh, on your line here. So I got, a, a new one, which is opto-isolated, I, I don't know if there's an opto-coupler in there or not, but it's isolated to, to prevent that. So, I'm going to be going from that to that, you can see, like, the little relay there, I think it said it was, like, what, 250 volt... I'm not using a lot of amps, I think it was like 250 volt uh, uh, 10 amp, so it should, it should be more than enough for this motor here. Uh, this before was my um, my buck converter. This was basically taking 48 volts and stepping it down to 12 volt to power the board. That's what this was for. Uh, I still, I think I still have a provision for that, but instead of doing that, um, because this thing actually requires 24 volt, I decided just to get another 24 volt power board which I'm going to mount in there. But I'm going to flip this over and I'll show you this too real fast. So, so this will be mounted like this with all my drivers. And I, have a, I have another box I've already designed. i got to print out. Oh yeah, another reason why I'm actually, I actually want to do this is I want to run my Nemer. I want to put my Nemer 23 back on here. You know, I need a bigger driver to be able to do that. Alright, so flip this over. So this is my new design. Similar to this, and these are all mounts to hold my driver motors, 
on the other side. Um, I can't remember where this went. Somewhere in here. But I have a little standoffs where all this stuff goes. I think I had it right here. That goes right here. And then I had uh, a hole where all the wires are going to fish through. I'll show you this one. I start getting it built. And that was my thing here. But then I also created... In case I... Uh, I'm going to put that in there. The, I'm going to re-put the buckler burger in there. But in case I want to run some fans... Well, actually, I'm going to have a fan on my box. So I wanted to be able to step this down to either... Tw from 48... It doesn't matter which one I use, but... Um, you know, the 20... I'll probably end up using the 20-volt. Step it down with the buck converter here. And, um... All right, I got to start wearing this up. So I got to I got to desolder this stuff and move it over. Um, and, uh, get it going. That'd be cool. Yeah, Mach 3. Alright, so, yeah, if you guys are wondering, uh, you know, if I'm spending all kinds of money and spending all... Actually, I do this for fun. This is like, uh... Yeah, I can actually buy a much more cable of CNC, but actually, it's, it's fun learning the mechanics of CNC, like the motor controls and all the controller boards and stuff, and... Uh, that way, because I'm actually already looking at buying, a, like, a bigger CNC, or, like, a Tormach or Haas or an older Haas, but... My issue is I don't have three-phase power here, so I don't have a lot of options. Uh, even looking at one of those like older mill style, like old like 80 CNCs, maybe upgrade the electronics. So I wanted to learn Mach 3. So in case I ever wanted to buy like an old CNC from the 80s, I would just change out the electronics to like Mach 3. So right, this might not make sense, but okay. So the white is the neutral, black is the hot, green is the ground. So power comes in, neutral feeds the 24 volt power supply, and also feeds the neutral on the 110 out. So it just basically is a bridge over here to this other 110. Uh, the hot goes over to the switch here, and then everything else feeds off and needs hot off of this side of the switch right here. And one side feeds the actual uh, the relay here. That's going to provide the uh, power to the coolant. And the another one comes off here and goes right into the actual uh, hot side of the uh, power supply. And the other side, uh, then a hot comes back and feeds this side right here. comes back from the relay. So I'm feeding 110 and coming back out 110 when it's triggered back into that spot right there. Um, yeah, you probably can't see it as well as I can, but... Alright, so now, I, since I fed that, I gotta start working on the low voltage stuff. So I wanted to get the high voltage stuff done, 110, the mains. And I'll start working on the, uh, the lower stuff, 48 volt, 24 volt. So I'm gonna be feeding through that hole, 24 volt and 48 volts gonna be coming back through to feed the, the steppers and the spindle motor. And the main board. So, main board, spindle, drivers, stepper drivers. Here is the power is connected. Obviously, I don't want to touch those together. And I'm going to do a um, multimeter test, hopefully with one hand. Get in there. All right. 24 volts. So that's going to be feed the main board. All right. So I think you guys get where I'm going with this. It does stick out pretty far out of the back, but that's not a big deal. Alright, I got some power hooked up. It's getting dark, so... Might be done for tonight. Power to the board. Um, so my purple is my 24 volt, and my red is my 48 volt. I mean, this is not the best way to do it, but I'm kind of cramped. Normally, I'd want to do like a bus bar, but I'm just kind of daisy chaining the power over. So definitely not the best ideal, but... I'm only powering Nemo 17 motors, so um, shouldn't be that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm not doing like full current. I'm probably going to do like an amp each. Amp, amp and a half tops for the uh, Nemo 17s and probably two amp for the uh, Nemo 23, the uh, Z-axis.